and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some anti-burn. That's right, we're gonna see if we can build a deck that is going to take down these Noxus Bilgewater decks that are everywhere. You know, your Misfortune, Gangplank type decks. Uh, just want a lot of Nexus healing. And so that's what we're gonna be doing is building a deck with Nexus healing. So what we got in here is we're putting together Shadow Isles and Targon because Targon has Guiding Touch to heal our Nexus 2 and Star Shaping to heal our Nexus 5. Both of those very good cards. Combining those with Shadow Isles that give us Unspeakable Horror and Vile Feast, they can be a little bit of removal and also drain to be able to heal our Nexus. So we got three copies of each of those. And then two copies of Grasp of the Undying uh, to be able to drain three from a unit, be able to, which this card's pretty important against Misfortune. Or also, um, like against Imperial Demolitionist, it's important to have fast speed things that do more than one um, if they're targeting something that, uh, like with Noxion Fervor and Imperial Demolitionist, both of those kind of cards, um, it's it's important to be able to respond to those and uh, be able to do more than one because they'll usually respond, you know, use those on like two twos or three threes or you know things like that. You know, and we want to be able to have something to take down like Zap's Brafin with one card, for example. So a couple of Grasping Undyings, a couple of Withering Whales that can uh, help against like Petty Officer. And whenever they're going wide, and this can pair up with your Vile Feast and Unspeakable Horror to take down a few things. Um, and uh, and those are also some other Nexus healing. So um, yeah, so that we've got combining all of those Nexus healing cards together with Shadow Isles and Targon to try to be anti-burn with that, you know, be able to counteract Decimates and Noxion Fervors and those kind of cards. So then... Uh, Besides that, we're going to have to play some other stuff, right? <laughs> so we're going to play the Daybreak cards with Solari Soldier, Solari Shieldbearer, uh, Solari Priestess, and you know, like they're they're all just like pretty good on the curve. You know, Solari Priestess is going to be lower end of the curve, but it will be getting us the card advantage that we're going to need. It's going to be getting very powerful invoke cards that could include the six mana um, Silver Sisters that uh, give us the Life Steal four three Life Steal. And then, of course, Leona and Robin. Um, you know, so that, they'll just kind of be finishing out our Daybreak stuff. And then also playing Thresh. So basically, Leona and Thresh are kind of similar, where they're just huge bodies for their mana cost. You know, a 3-5 for 4, a 3-6 Challenger for 5. Both very big bodies, so they're both good defensively. And that's what our deck is, is going to be designed on, on uh, stabilizing and winning the defensive games. Then, you know, with Thresh or the Challenger, can help clear the board and everything and then Leona can be used to stun uh, maybe something like Gangplank or uh, just other things like that. Uh, let's see and then Robin matches up well against Gangplank being a good blocker. Um, uh, no the trust me I've played the box a whole lot it's really the box is not playable <laughs> trust me I, I've tried the box so much it's it's just it just doesn't work it's nice in theory but it just doesn't work. So we're not, not going to be going that way. Um, I'd rather have more Withering Whale than the box. Anyway, our top end, we got we got one Sunburst, one Vengeance. I like Vengeance more as a card than Sunburst of having the fast speed removal. But Sunburst is Daybreak for Leona, so I feel like that's kind of important. So we're going to have one of each of those. I know it does look like I have, like, so, so, you know, I do have some one-ups for different situations. Like, if we need just, you know, just get a fourth one drop in here so we don't have j just the three. We got a Spacey Sketcher. Spacey Sketcher could could discard different cards that we don't necessarily need to, to help invoke. Um, you know, again, invoking gives us the powerful cards. And then just a couple of cards against other decks in the metagame with one Bash and one Hush. Um, but, you know, this deck, I'm not really designed to, I'm, I didn't design this deck to try to defeat other decks in the metagame. This is anti-burn. <laughs> I'm trying to take down Noxus and Bilgewater, so I'm not really too worried about Trundle and Aurelian Soul and Lee Sin and all that kind of stuff. We we still have some cards against those decks. We're not going to just always lose to them. But, um, you know, that's so that, that was like the last couple, last few slots that I had. Like one Glimpse Beyond gets a little bit of card draw, so we have a draw two in here uh, just to be able to use. Um, you know, so so those last like four slots, uh, that's what I decided to go with was one each of these different cards for for different decks. All right, so let's see how we do against Burn. Hopefully, that's what we get paired against a lot. I mean, Noxus Bilgewater is kind of everywhere, so um, yeah. Let's see Misfortune at Gangplank. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no yeah there's no like burst speed Daybreak cards, right? So we don't get to. Uh, you know, can't like trigger Leona's ability. 
And yeah, no even fast speeds either, right? No fast or burst speed daybreak cards. All right, we're gonna mulligan guiding touch to start with, because we won't we won't need that one right away. And I guess I'm gonna mulligan withering whale to have eh, Robin. We don't need Robin. We'll mulligan Robin. All right, I'm glad I mulliganed Robin, because if I would have kept Robin and then drawn Star Shaping Thresh, I would have been sad. Uh, no. So I'm not going to block that thing being a 3-3 right now anyway. Okay, do I need Vengeance? So basically, Vengeance is probably going to be just good against Nocturne. They're, like The other thing to worry about this Diana Nocturne deck is going to be Cygnus. Let me get rid of Vengeance. Spilled paint is just accidental art. Um, because basically its its role is going to be to kill one of those things. Uh, you know, one of those things that are pretty big. Or like an elusive thing, a Nocturne, that kind of stuff. And Solari Priestess can get us the Obliterate card that basically is going to do the same thing that Vengeance will do. I'm not sure if we need the fast speed. Which there it is with the falling comet. Take this golden sister though. Yep, so there's Diana. Which whenever they pass, they're you know definitely showing they're gonna play Diana. Which Diana would have killed my spacey sketcher anyway. Daybreak card. Uh, the trickster was an important one because of loot, or because of like their two three. Uh, you know, basically thinking of the the two three elusive. So two nightfall cards so far. So willing to make that attack probably means Pale Cascade. I was hoping they were not willing to make that attack. The question is, so I'm challenging Diana. And so the main question is challenge Diana immediately before they can do anything else. Or play the Golden Sister first so that I get to attack with the Golden Sister and the Silver Sister. Which I would like to be able to attack with those. So I'm gonna play them. Night flowers upon my blade. The promise of a new moon upon you, Bloom Tender. The hour is mine. Right, so assuming they have Pale Cascade, this is just gonna be This is just gonna be bad for me. Because I think their Diana is going to kill my Thresh. That is my expectation of what's going to happen here, and I'm not too happy about it. Cloaked in silver, find your path in the dark and follow no false light. Yep. So 
That was predictable. That was kind of the problem with playing the Golden Sister and Silver Sister first, was that uh, it let them play something to turn on their Nightfall cards. I hope they don't have another Diana in hand. Each act of heresy is an act of passion. Of course they do. Yeah, maybe I should just pass back and not attack at all. After I played the Golden Sister and they just passed back with all that mana. Well, if they did not have... They did not have another Diana. I liked my liked my setup, but they did have another Diana. I block here, we take 10, go to 6. Block here, we take 11, go to 5, but I keep my Solari Soldier alive. But then, again, it's just a 2-1. I don't know exactly what it's doing. It's just a 2-1 at that point. I can block here. I'm going to block here. This saves the most life, and this, this makes it a lot easier to kill the Nocturne with the cards that we have in our deck with having a three Vile Feast and three Unspeakable Horror and Withering Whales. I need this to work. Need them to be out. Uh, out of pump spells like that. So put me down to two. Hey, Annie Desu with the raid. Welcome, welcome everybody from Annie Desu's stream. We are currently playing an anti burn deck. Um, this game didn't go my way. I. I mean, yeah, like, we're gonna go negative four. I, I can't... Like, star shaping doesn't save me. I can cast it, but it doesn't save me. See, like, we're still going to negative one. We can't, we can't heal our Nexus over 20. I think usually we're gonna be winning that matchup. They had to have that second Diana, which they did... Yeah, I just shouldn't have attacked that turn six. I should have just passed the turn. And, uh, okay, I'm glad we're playing this one again. I, I feel pretty good about us winning this game. Um, I, I don't regret... I think that taking the 3-3 three, three elusive was better than taking the Crescent Strike. I don't... I, don't, I wouldn't take the Crescent Strike playing that game again. Because yeah, yeah, they have a bunch of elusives. I think I think that taking the three three was the right call. Clad in shining sunlight. Oh, feels creative. We just played against you. Okay, so yeah, so I, I just should yeah, so I just should not have attacked that turn six. That's what I was thinking. Is just you had two pill cascades, so I just shouldn't have attacked. And and just whenever I played my thing and you passed priority, I should just pass back with you having all that mana and me being tapped out of mana. Yeah, I should have passed. Yeah, the second Diana was clutch. That second Diana was really important. Ours is the one true light. Each act of heresy is an act of passion. Any act of heresy will be punished. I guess I just shouldn't have played these things early when I did. Devotion to battle. I will be heard. All right, so using the hush to kill the Diana. So now Pill Cascade doesn't save Diana because they challenge the three-two and not the two-two. 
I wish I had the one more mana. I could have had the, ske the Sketcher discard the Hush. That would have been ideal. Uh, but, you know, life's not always ideal. Punish transgressions. So the question is, how high would you say the skill cap of Legends of Runeterra is? The guilty were bad. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't really know. Um... Both player, okay. So both players have like the same mana. Both players have a whole bunch of cards throughout the game, and so there is. Uh, there is uh, quite a you know like there is. There's a lot of ways to be able to um, sequence well and uh, give yourself a, a higher percent chance of winning. Um, there is a. So there is a lot of skill involved in this game. I don't necessarily want to Spacey Sketcher discarding anything in my hand. Maybe the Withering Whale? Do need to find an answer for this Diana. Diana, sorry, Diana. Spilled paint is just accidental art. I would like Diana to challenge um, the Spacey Sketcher. Night flowers upon the blade. The promise of a new moon upon you, Bloom Tender. I wasn't really planning on playing Thresh this turn. What's our deck's core? Um, Vile Feast, Unspeakable Horror. We haven't seen any Unspeakable Horror yet. Um, but Vile Feast, Unspeakable Horror, and Guiding Touch and Star Shaping, Withering Whale and Grasp the Undying. I have been feeling like I need more Grasp the Undying. For sure, from playing, you know, just just these two games, I've been wanting more Grasp of the Undying. I cannot turn back. Devotion to battle. Face your heretic. I will be heard. Face your heretic. Yeah, I mean, Diana's just amazing for a two-mana card. It's It's been the card that has been dominating these games. I think I pass. The Nocturne will level up on this attack. Follow the horizon. It's our time. All right, so block. so attack here. We're going down to three. Let's go to this. Go down to six. So we're taking out two Dianas and a Nocturne. So three champions already. In the top twelve cards. Hopefully, not too many more champions. Hmm. <laughs> That's unfortunate drawing those in the order that we did. I guess Ro I guess we want to play Robin Daybreak anyway. Our sun will not set today. All right, so gonna keep my Daybreak going, so we'll be able to play Priestess. Yes, yeah, so they have three cards we don't know about. Not scared of Solari Soldier. 
So three other cards. Um, I do have a Sunburst in hand, which is basically Falling Comet. Uh, I don't really care about Rain and Stars too much. Um, the Woy like So basically, am I going to want to play the Warrior to keep things in check, or do I really want Falling Comet? Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to take the Falling Comet. Because, you know, like, they play, like, a Cygnus, and then I have to, like, Sunburst... And then, so then I'm going to want, like, a Falling Comet for a Diana or a Nocturne. Like, I think it's nice to have a backup one of these for, like, because they're going to play, like, their champions, Diana, Nocturne, that kind of stuff. They're going to play it on their turn and then attack with them. And my Warrior won't be able to take them down before they're attacking. Unspeakable Horror. Unspeakable Horror is so good. I wish I was playing that card. Wow, look how good Unspeakable Horror is. I really wish I was playing that card. If only I had that card. That would be cool. See? I need Unspeakable Horror because I need to be able to ping this to get rid of the Spell Shield and then Sunburst it. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that one Unspeakable Horror grabbed a Lunari Priestess, which grabbed a Traveler, which grabbed a Great Beyond. Like, are you kidding me? Like, what a... <laughs> what a crappy way to lose. When we have, like, this game... You know, like, we have, like, the regular game, like, so, like, so locked up. And they just do this, so we lose. So, this game... The, the kind of the weird thing that I did wrong was I played Solari Priestess. Like, after I played Ravin, they passed. If I don't play Solari Priestess, they would have just passed with all that mana. Yeah, congratulations. You're amazing. We had that we had that game locked up so well. That's so frustrating. Whoa! What is this card? Unspeakable horror? Huh? I didn't I didn't think we could have that in our deck. Whoa! That's weird. I'm gonna keep it. Ours is the one true light. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. No mercy for heretics. Glorious this end. one card for them got a 2-1 and a 3-4 and a 9-8 elusive with uh, spell shield. That's, that's what that's called. It's ridiculous. Unyielding light. So Equinox, Equinox would be good against Robin. Yeah, basically that's, that's what Equinox would be good would be against Robin. I'm gonna take this 4-1 Overwhelm. Devotion through battle. Okay, so basically I was thinking that I didn't really want to play Leona and then they play their own Leona. I don't know, maybe I still just don't want to do that. I probably should just attack. Ah, they don't have Leona. Okay, it worked out. Last 
in her radiant blessing. Robin. Our sun will not set today. <laughs> Messenger's cool. Hmm. My faith protects me. Hey, Tony. Well, that's too bad. I don't get to play more three sixes or Solari Priestess or anything like that. Alright, let's see what we get with our Nightfall card. We get Lunari Priestess. Dusk Rider. Alright, star shaping now. Or waste two mana. I guess I'll waste two mana. I don't feel like I was supposed to start shaping. Witness glory. You want to pill cascade and have these trade? That's cool. Me. Sunlight guided my brethren. I'll take the warrior. Yeah, we're playing ranked. I wasn't too worried about open attacks right here. Want to play warrior. Yeah, they, they played a messenger sigil, so they've been so they have a bunch of mess you know, so they have like five messengers in their decks. So they've drawn two of them so far. Maybe we lose to Elusive Spell Shield Dragon again. I guess you never know. Anything is possible. Some puppers. That was a good Living Legends for them. There's only one card they didn't play. That was pretty good. Okay, so we have an Equinox, Great Beyond, Moon Silver, Trickster, Crescent Strike, Written in Stars. Play that and pass. I'm gonna pass him back to me. So of course we want to play more celestial cards first. So that um, our great beyond is larger. And now this time we have huge elusive with spell shield.
Hmm. So if we challenge 5-5, five, five, attack with all these, pull four blocks to 8-8, eight, eight, they take 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, and they are at 12. So they take not lethal. Yeah, still, yeah, still an 8-8, so, you know, traded with one of those. I know these paths well. Let's try again. What else we got? Alright, so we cannot play the Warrior and Golden Sister. We can play Written in Stars and Warrior and Moon Glow and Messenger. Yeah, I think I like doing all that. Start with Messenger. Messenger believes it chases the trickster. Cool. So I guess instead of playing the warrior, I could play Meteor Shower. Play the warrior. I love sparkle flying. We'll have our eight four not trade with four fours. That's not a wonderful trade. All right, thresh first. Or attack first. Yeah, we're not necessarily going to be winning this game. Them answering our, our great beyond, both my, you know, they basically answer both my living legends. We're not necessarily going to be winning this game. So we... I'd have to use a lot of cards to kill Robin right now if we want to kill Robin. Keep Leona from stunning stuff. Just doesn't sound like that good of an option. We rise. What? The whole point of me doing that was so it wouldn't be Daybreak. That was the whole point of me doing that, was so it wouldn't be Daybreak. I guess I should have done that to Leona. Huh. I should have done that to Leona. Oh no, that thing oh right, that thing grows again. Leona grows again. No, you don't you don't heal things by hushing, so if, if I would if I would have hushed my own Draco, it would just be an 8-6, it wouldn't be an 8-8. Eight, eight. You don't it doesn't get healed.
All right, let's see how they block. Wow. Okay, rather pr protect Leona than protect their Nexus. Unfortunately, only Unspeakable Horror is doing damage to the Nexus. That's the only one. This is gonna die. All right, let's see how this this works. So this will, um, this will have the Thresh level up, uh, which will then kill the Mountain Crier. cards they have. Four cards? Not, not the most cards. I know, can we get at least one pirate aggro matchup? I hope so. I sure hope so. So I want to Unspeakable Horror the Robin, but... I, they're also at two. So in case we draw it, we've only—I guess we've already played one unspeakable horror, right? So we'd have to draw our third unspeakable horror. Okay, well I'm really glad that, or you know, glad that we just see that. So now I know to unspeakable horror there, Robin. The dawn has arrived. Uh. Never leave. All right, so that stuns the great beyond. So if I go Vengeance on Leona, Unspeakable Horror on Robin, that leaves me at 10 with two blockers, but I only want to block with one. Basically have them have lethal. I guess, so I guess like, so basically I guess that means I don't get to Vengeance, Leona. And I kind of also think that means that we don't get to Nightfall. No, because I, mm. All right, being greedy here. I really hope they don't have another Daybreak card. Bask in her radiant blessing. Please don't have another Daybreak card. Okay, good. Back, heretic. You cannot sway me. Back down to one. So I can't risk them having unspeakable horror and then I play like Doom Beast or, or Grass the Undying and they unspeakable horror and kill me. We're gonna be star shaping. so far of fighting through this uh, this thing that's given every, all their stuff plus two plus two. It's not easy to fight through that. Got our own Leona now. That will get rid of the spell shield. The sun's splendor revealed. Our sun will not uh. set today.
Doesn't look great. So I have 15 cards left, they're at 19 cards left. I will protect you. Alright, good, no pill cascade. That would have killed me. Switch spots with two and four. Sunlight guide you, my brother. I could go Leona Thresh that puts in another Leona attacking, or we could just go the Living Legends. I believe I have another Leona in my deck, but I guess I don't remember. This has been a super long game. They obviously just killed one Leona. Here's one Leona. I, I'm i not 100% sure that I have a third Leona um, in the deck. I think I do. Probably said I had. Do you have a living Leo? Oh, or sorry, do you have a Leona left? The dawn has arrived. I thought I thought they were out of Leona. So I thought I killed three. Guess not. Hey, hey, what's up, Jake? All right, so I attack with Thrash. I have two options. Either kill one of their things like this, which is a poor option, because then, then their 6-8 blocks my 4-6. Or go like this, where they still have to block the 4-6. Cabo, come on. Gabo says, you still have a Leona 100%. Well, it's less than that. Sunlight burns in our weapons. <laughs> right, so that stuns two things. Kill Leona and stun another thing. dead yet. I'm glad they didn't play that first before attacking. The mountain speaks to those who listen. Young yeah, really glad they didn't play these first. Alright, so you have a Scourge and a Crescent Strike. Probably going that route, Scourge, Crescent Strike. Um, yeah, I mean, let's just... Six ten. The messenger chases stars from the sky. 
Yeah, I guess that would have been safer, wouldn't it? If I would have just played Scourge first and just held up Ashen to protect Scourge. I guess you're right. I guess that would have been safer. I was thinking... I don't know. I, yeah, I was thinking Stun and Equinox. I didn't need to do any of those, did I? Yeah, y'all are right. Alright, awesome. Daylight everlasting. See? The people before saying that we don't have enough win cons. We got some win cons in here. We got some win cons. Man, that we should be 2-1. and one. That second game was ridiculous that we lost that second game. Alright, let's see if we play against some Pirate Burn. No. We are not getting paired against Pirate Burn. So all Shadow Isles means plenty of Mist Wraiths. Um, gonna mulligan these two cards. Uh, maybe I just mulligan Solari Priestess also. That card's not amazing against Mist Wraith. Let's see what else we get. Wow, we can actually play Unspeakable Horror. We are allowed to play this card. Incredible. And there's the first Mist Wraith. Clad in shining sunlight. <laughs> Scorching light. Probably just block, right? I mean, I'm, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, they just trade those. The Undying. So Golden Sister uh, trades with two Mist Wraith. I'm going to be waiting on Hush. You know, Hush will eventually take out this The Undying, but we don't need to do that right away. YouTube title, Legends of Runeterra, Anti-Burn, 10 Hours of Targon's, Targon Shadow Isles While You Sleep. <laughs> We're not playing the fact, yeah, our deck's not designed to win quickly, it's just designed to have the, you know, to, designed to build, to beat the Noxus Bilgewater burn decks. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but every time we win. Okay, we're going to not play this Solari Soldier yet. Just gonna play that thing. Pass the turn. I didn't want to waste all of my mana. I didn't really want to do anything. Sacrifice for a greater I wish I could respond to that. So basically, basically I was thinking I want my Solari Soldier to be a 3-3 on defense against Mistrace. Everyone's a garden. All right, so I am going to cast Grasp the Undying on a four-three. Looks like. Yeah, looks like we're doing that. Good card. Blighted Caretaker is going to be a mess. I 
Aquilabot with the donation deck. Thank you so much, Aquilabot. We shall pierce their treasonous hearts. The uh, donation deck for Brom Anivia. Well, I can't really play that. Speakable horror, their own thing to clear the room. So I do not want to vile feast the two one, because then that will level up Callista if their plan here is Wraith Caller. Okay, so that's their plans. So they're gonna have leveled up Callista either way. this. You are beneath me. Walk there. We have no quarrel. Walk here, block here. I gain one life total. Okay, so let's see. We go Thresh. Yeah, let's go Thresh. So nine mana next turn. I wish it was ten so I could play the three cards on the left. And my plan is this, and then Cygnus, give the Golden Sister Elusive, be able to hit them for four, Elusive with Lifesteal. Well, I had a plan. Didn't work. They're left with five cards in hand and the Undying, and I'm just left with five cards in hand. Uh, I'm not going to play this. Uh, I'm not going to play the Guiding Touch yet, because now seven mana. I do have Vengeance plus Grasp if we need those. Um, I only have the one Hush in the deck also, so the second Undying is going to be more problematic. I don't have another Hush for that. Oh, a Scout? Considering pairing up Thresh and Vengeance this turn. Like, Vengeance kill the Scout, then also have Thresh. that. Okay, well, GG's. Man, are you serious? No Bilgewater Noxus? Does it have anything to do with the regions that you're playing? I feel like you get paired against, like, your same regions all the time. So we're, we're playing Targon Shadow Isles. We got paired against Targon Shadow Isles, Targon Shadow Isles, just straight Targon, just straight Shadow Isles, and now Targon PNZ. Does it have anything to do with... Does it have anything to do with the regions that you're playing? Because that's what it sure feels like. Uh, 
So much for anti-burn getting paired against burn. So much for that. All right, we got our Leonas. Behold the sun's holy light. Where'd you go? All right, they're there. Burn away, doubt. Back, heretic. There's Heimerdinger. So. Warriors of the Raharaka, time is now. We'll follow you to the edge of daybreak. Probably game over. Our opponents have had, have done a, a very good job of drawing their champions. They have done that for sure. So do I just open attack? Or maybe play like Sun Guardian? I can only play like one of these things, so we're We're not really doing that much with Leona. You know, we'd level up Leona, but then that's it. I'm just gonna open attack. Oh, this is gonna be such a long game, isn't it? We're gonna take this long for every th little decision. Oh, this is gonna be a long game. I don't have any any thoughts that vengeance would resolve through like re would resolve and kill the Heimerdinger. I think they would have Bastion. And so I want to try to have uh vent like whenever I do cast vengeance, I want to be able to break a Bastion. So I want to try to draw one of our Vile Feast or Unspeakable Horrors first. So they almost played a different card, this other card, and then they ended up playing Thermogenic Beam, so they have, um, you know, something else that's kind of similar. Alright, check back in another hour to see what we're going to do next turn. Okay, that wasn't bad. The dawn has arrived. They would never leave. Glorious light rains down. Oh yeah, they played some burst, not thermogenic beam. Sorry, sorry, I said the wrong card. Sorry. But there's the thermogenic beam. Five one is quick attack. Yeah. You can take five. Okay, they're not even going to attack. Alright, trying to kill Heimerdinger. FEMA with the raid! Thank you so much, FEMA. Welcome everybody from FEMA stream. So, you know, trying to kill Heimerdinger and use Vile Feast, of course, to be able to break up a Bastion. Not eternal. Well, that's too bad. We're gonna have another Heimerdinger. I'm gonna have to deal with. Ah, the sweet smell of science. Unacceptable advancement in ballistics. We will play one of these things. I have too many of these things in hand. Not escape punishment. Keep. I'm gonna keep my three spell mana. 
what do I want to do? So I would like to play Solari Priestess first, if possible. Because that can find Obliterate for us. Yeah, I think on I think on Sunday we were at like 250 LP or so. But I've had a rough few days. Alright, attack's coming in. No mercy for heretics. You cannot sway me. Alright, I can take five. Well, you know, more than five. We'll be able to heal our Nexus, it's not that big a deal. There we go, falling comet. According to plan. The sun's splendor reveals. If this and they're probably looking for another written in stars. If this works, that'll be two of the three Heimerdingers down. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. I think it's gonna work. Cool. All right, two hammer digger down. Protect our people. Sunlight light. We're going to play this huge 8-7 Overwhelm with them at 11. Threaten a lot of damage here. Okay. Going to start shaping. Uh, we do not behold another Celestial card, do we? No, we do not. Um, and we... Probably won't. Oh, no, 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 no! <laughs> well. That was the wrong thing. That's true, I wouldn't have any daybreak anyway for that. That thing. Um, I was still gonna take, I was still gonna take the other, uh, I was still gonna take the middle card. The obliterate two things. I was still gonna take that even though we didn't have another behold card. I kind of misclicked. Okay. Let's see what Thresh can do. If I cast this with Daybreak, we will activate the Solari Priestess Daybreak, and then we will be able to get the other Celestial cards. That's what I was thinking. But so I want to keep the Obliterate two things. It's like another way to get, you know, a final way to get rid of the last Heimerdinger. So that's what Solari Priestess grabbed. So I think I go. Shield bear, unspeakable horror, or unspeakable horror. We could do that same thing with Leona first. We could also just save Leona. Uh, I mean, I guess we just play Leona first. Think about playing Solari shield bear, and then these we'd have two extra mana for whatever like nightfall cards that we get if we need to play those. I don't think we're really needing to play guiding touch this turn, but maybe. <laughs> Thanks, Kavo. Yeah, this time I don't have any Leonas left. Oh. Okay, what do they got? Five? It's not ideal.
So that was two, two star shapings. So they already played one star shaping, so, so we know they're out of star shapings. And they're out of Pale Cascades. They played one, like, yeah, they've gotten rid of both their Pale Cascades, the others before that. You're passing over to me. Alright, just pass over to me. That's a good card. So they're down to 13 cards left. Uh, Rain and Stars is grabbing Thresh. We're going to get this Traveler. Just rather have, um, rather have the Celestial card that we will invoke and the body. Guiding Touch will probably be healing, you know, be for healing these if they try to kill them with like Static Shock or whatever. We'll be able to heal one at least. All right, now, yeah, now we can get this. Um, which one's more important? If I let Leona die, that's my last Leona. I don't get any more Leonas. So Thresh isn't going to be putting anything into play, so it's just a challenger. I guess it's Leona, because Thresh is just simply a challenger. No, I don't think Thresh... No, Thresh cannot pull Thresh. I got a lot of cards over there. Hopefully no Heimerdinger. Hopefully their last Heimerdinger is in their bottom. 10% of cards. Okay, that's their last Solari Priestess. Bask in her radiant blessings. So they're probably out of Invoke. Just Supernova. Let my stars guide we'll get our Champagne Supernova going on. I can have start, you know, so we have one invoke card right now, but we can get an additional with the star shaping. We have one celestial card. And obviously, champagne supernovas for the third and final Heimerdinger. So Valfis gives me a 3 3 if I play that on their 1 1. The Undying. I want to play this because I want to see what Nightfall card we get. Hopefully Lunari Priestess. Okay. Stygian Onlooker. Dude, right? These games, yeah. We have played some incredibly long games. We're at these five games right now. We're at an hour and thirty-two minutes <laughs> right now. It's been ridiculous. We're just supposed to be an anti-burn deck, but we've only played against Targon and Shadow Isles. The PNC in my opponent's deck is the only non-Targon and Shadow Isles region we played against in five games. Finally, we played against. Something else. Oh, I'm at 17 cards left. They're at 9. May definitely end in... Uh, milling out. <laughs> Possible. Answers. I have them. All right, going to try to obliterate. We have the Living Legends in hand also, not only just the Traveler. If 
Vile Thieves make a 3 3. Alright, cool. The Undying's out of here for good. Alright, so we've gotten rid of all three Heimerdingers. Come on. So they're, they're one star shaping. You know, it's like... It's, they don't have any more star shapings. Alright, so if we cast this... So we're probably fine. I guess casting it on this thing only saved me the two life, didn't it? I forgot that that, you know, wouldn't go back down to the one health. That's fine. Okay. Alright, so my plan this turn was to Living Legends, but now I guess I'm gonna go Solari, Priestess, and Thresh. Yeah. Skies descend. All right, I guess that's a card that Flash of Brilliance can create. I'm gonna lose this game that I didn't think I could lose at all. I guess I should have gone living. I don't. If I would have gone Living Legends last turn, they would have like skies descended all of the stuff from Living Legends. So I'm kind of glad we didn't. They still could have had one more Bastion in their deck, so I'm glad they didn't have that Bastion. Okay, now you know they just drew it off the Progress Day. So they have two cards left in their deck. They did discard one. Get excited. Also. Thirteen mana. How do we want to do this? So Golden Sister would be six, Traveler four, so like that would be ten. And then like Serpent. Like do I need do I need to play the Warrior? Or I guess let's see. I could go Golden Sister and Falling Comet. Just pass. I feel like I'm supposed to get Golden Sister in play. I cannot play three of Falling Comet, Golden Sister, Traveler, Warrior. I can play two of those four. Yeah, we played we played the Burst Spell. We played the Living Legend, so the turn's not going to descend. Yeah, so Equinox, Traveler, Sisters. It's probably a good plan. Then we can also have Moon Glow. My faith protects me. The problem with playing Equinox is I don't have Bastion up. I want to keep Bastion up. Each journey is a discovery. I can have Serpent, Bastion, kill the Scourge. Will this thing still happen? It should still probably cost the set. Still probably cast get the seven drop, shouldn't it? So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be doing this or not. I should be going Serpent with Spell Shield for the Scourge. Uh, yeah, I'm not not really planning on silencing the Scourge. Not going to be able to. Okay. 
I was planning on that seven life. Um, maybe that was a bad plan also. Or the eight life. I was planning on. Oh, I should have challenged. Well, I had that night to kill that, but now we couldn't. Why did we not challenge? Because I needed the blockers. If I would have challenged, we would have been dead with this attack. We would have just lost the game if I would have challenged. So if I would have, yeah, so basically casting the Bastion cost me that, right? Like if I just don't, if I don't cast the Bastion, then I go Equinox instead. Um, we're probably not losing that. Yep. Because then, you know, they don't get that, you know, then I'm at six still. They don't get, they don't get the Overwhelm. Those were <laughs> three very winnable games that we lost. By very winnable, I mean, su you know, super close and, and I just ended up losing. Uh, with our with our one and four, the first loss, um, you know, like they had to have the second Diane to kill us. They did, and, and you know they killed us. Like I, I was gonna lose that one, but those last three all felt like they could have been wins. Just you know, got to make different decisions. You know, the bash, you know, just different. You know, just had decisions that that cost me. I go one way, and and uh, our opponents have the things that win. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I guess our deck's good against Burn. That was an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> Basically two hours to play. Um, I did not enjoy playing those games. The, <laughs> you know, I, I wish we could have just played this against Burn. That's all I wanted to do. Um, that last game, too, with our opponent taking so long, that was really frustrating. Um, but that's, that's how it goes. Um, you know, so... Our anti-burn deck um, went one and one and four. Could have definitely been a four and one, but I didn't. I didn't make the correct decisions, and that's how that's how Legends of Runeterra is. You got to got to make the correct decisions. Um, so, yeah, the question: Will this deck list be get revisited? I mean, I think so because I would love to play this against Burn. We never got to. Do y'all think that there's anything wrong with the pairing system? Does it feel like it does feel like does it feel like whenever you like whatever region you play, you get paired against that region a bunch? Sure, sure feels like it. <laughs> I don't know. Does it feel like that with y'all? Like whenever you play Noxus deck, you get paired against Noxus. When you play get, play Shadow Isles, Targon, all you get paired against are Shadow Isles and Targon. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's not a thing. But if, if, like, these games were any indication... Like, we got paired against a mono Targon deck. We got paired against a mono Shadow Isles deck. Like, when I play when I play Ionia... Ionia um, you know, like, like uh, the like the Swole Cat, like, playing Ionia, we play we get paired against a lot of Ionia with that. But yeah, I think our deck list was good. Okay, so basically what I was impressed with... Okay, uh, anyway, about our deck, I was definitely impressed with how our deck did against the non-burn decks, against those late-game decks considering our deck is just built to, to play against the, the burn decks, I was really impressed with how well of a late game that we had, how, you know, these games are going like 30 minutes, but we're still toe to toe with the other late game decks. So I was definitely really impressed with that. Even though, you know, I'm not playing like a brilliant souls or mind splitters or, you know, any, I'm not like really playing top end, you know, Leona and thresh aren't, aren't like absolutely amazing or anything in the late games. But yeah, just basically thanks to Invoke, we were still able to have that kind of late game. So I was, I was, I wasn't thinking that like, uh, um, I wasn't thinking that they would, um, 
e even with us having the invoke, I was thinking that our op opponents would have just even more evoke and they would still just pull away a lot easier, but uh, they didn't. And so I was pretty impressed with that. How about that Bastion hit that they got off of the Progress Day? Whenever they went Progress Day, drew the Bastion, had the Bastion to save their 12-5. That was another unfortunate thing. But Anyway, oh well, that's Anti-Burn. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Feel free to leave any comments about this super long video. Um, you know, let me know how, how you like the deck, all that kind of stuff. If you, if you try the deck out yourself and you get to play against Burn, let me know how it goes because we didn't get paired against it here. All right, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.